What is everybody? Welcome to another video of mine. Um, uh, today, I, I kind of just wanted to talk a little bit about two things. One is going to be um, um, about you know, Zion Williamson and you know a lot of the things are being thrown out there right now about um, who he's going to sign for. You know, is is he going to sign for Adidas? Is he going to um, sign for Nike? And I read some somewhere um, that they're predicting like Nike is going to offer him a 100 million, I believe it was, dollar contract to sign for them. And LeBron was, I think they said LeBron was like at 87 million. Now, mind you, this is before they even dribble a basketball in the NBA, before they score a single point, and they sign that contract, and that's what they're going to get. Of course, I don't know exactly how contracts work and things like that, but, you know, when I hear, like, $100 million that Nike's willing to to give, or any company for that matter, that's that's outrageous to me. That's, that's, that's a lot of money. Um, but I will say, I think you should sign for Nike still, um, just because, I mean, for me, I would sign for Nike personally, and not just because that's where I work, but but more just because you know I the culture of Nike like everything that is done there's just history there that Adidas doesn't have so if I never worked for Nike I mean I would still have the same um, view for the company um, and it doesn't I mean it also helps that I work there of course um, but so if it was me if I was Zion I would sign for for Nike even though the shoe ripped which I mean I see cases like that all the time where remember a shoe isn't invincible it's not it does not gonna last forever nothing lasts forever people go crazy about a shoe that costs what 120 130 dollars um but yet they spend over a thousand dollars on a cell phone that within a few months is running slow or or something's wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? So he's a big, a big kid, and and I I don't know how many times he played in them, how many times he practiced in them, but I mean, nothing is made to last forever. Therefore, um, the shoe blew up, it ripped, whatever, and it is what it is. Uh, but obviously, he's still um, playing. He was playing in Kyrie's last time I watched. Obviously, deuce out of the tournament, and. I mean, I'm just hoping now that the Bulls are able to kind of get him, get the pick, I guess. Um, but so that leads me to my next thing. You know, when I hear Nike throwing out contracts or, or giving people this, and I hope this doesn't get me in trouble. But like I said, I like to be honest on my things and everything I talk and I say comes from my heart. With sincerity, it it, it it could it might get me in trouble. I don't know. Like I said, if anybody from Nike is watching this, you know, I, I I it's just just my opinion, and it doesn't change anything as far as like how I feel about the company. I just just questions that I don't know. So what I want to say is, you know, when you when if you work for Nike, we are paid. Our payroll for the whole store, like you have a store, so our payroll is based off how much money we make. So a week before, or two weeks before, or whatever. So some people may not get hours. You may get one day a week, and sometimes less than that. Sometimes with people that don't even work. Now granted, everybody has a, a certain schedule that you put in, what you're available to work, etc., etc., Okay, so, you know, we are based off what we make. Um, and so to me, it's just crazy that they're willing to, you know, hand out, let's say, let's say it is a hundred million. They're, really, they're, they're, they're willing to give out a hundred million of their money for somebody, for a career. Um, yet, they don't take care of us athletes who work in the retail aspect of it. And it's not me sounding ungrateful. 
or nothing like that. And maybe it's just, um, you know, the store managers that make it a big deal. But for the most part, you know, I've worked at three different Nikes and it's been the same where they talk about money, how we need to make money, we're not making money, you know, and I, and we get punished. Us athletes get punished for that. Um, maybe that's just how corporate expects, you know, the managers to handle every. That's maybe. I don't know. We don't get told that much, you know, down lower. So I wish we could. Especially now, more now, I don't get nothing now that I'm just a part time athlete. So that kind of, those lines are kind of blurred still. Um, but my point is this I feel we have still a major role in in Nike you know we sometimes we are the ones that bring consumers coming back um, maybe not so much here in Orlando because we have a lot of tourists anyway so and as much for what they spend it kind of varies some people do come in trying to get new things um, and sometimes we have those things sometimes we don't but um a lot of people just come in for like the deal so they want to spend you know $35 on a pair of shoes just the other day some a guy comes in and he's asking uh, an associate and I, or, or um, a worker of mine, a co-worker of mine, and, and myself about some shoes and their thirty-four ninety-nine Revolution. And we tell him, you know, you're getting what you paid for. That's a, that's a thirty-five dollar shoe. I mean, it's not, it's not gonna last you long because it's very entry level. That means the materials aren't that good, and you get what you pay for. A lot of people don't understand that. And then he points down to his feet. And he's wearing those same shoes. And he was, I don't know if he was just trying to see what we'd say or what. But like I said, most of us, or at least I can speak on my part, we're very honest with the consumer. Like, I want someone, I would rather spend a, a half hour to an hour, you know, finding the right shoe for a consumer. Like, making sure they're comfortable and leaving with that purchase. You know, even if it's, you know trying on a whole bunch of different shoes and they leave with one that's maybe a hundred dollars versus they just wanted to take one that was 30 or 40. Now my thing with this is okay. So that consumer, so we let him know, you know, whatever. And then I, I directed him towards, you know, the Pegasus, which is very popular. They're at 35. So it's been going on for 35, you know, long years, history, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we're at the 35 right now and and he tried he tried on I believe the 34 the Pegasus 34 and he liked it and I basically explained to him like you know you should have just got this shoe in the beginning cuz now you're paying you were you know you you came and you bought that $35 shoe or whatever maybe he got it for cheaper $35 you were about to spend another $35 on the same shoe that adds up to the Pegasus which was on I think on sale for sixty nine ninety nine, so now if he would have just paid the sixty nine ninety nine the first time, he would have had a longer durable shoe. That's gonna, you know, um, he wouldn't have had to come back so often to to purchase. So a lot of people, maybe it's just tourists. I'm not sure, but a lot of those people come back, you know, or come looking for a cheap shoe, and you know those shoes are made for you know they're not made to last forever and they're not going to depending on how much walking you do or anything like that so um it's very important you know if you're listening to this or you're watching this and and you don't you're trying to decide on could you just go for the quick cheap shoe you know chances are just spend a little bit more money you're gonna get what you pay for you're gonna get better materials now that's not to say that if you find a a, a high-end shoe for cheap price that is a good deal but if you're going for the ones that you know are are right away you know discounted price down to like you know thirty five dollars forty dollars i mean you're gonna get what you're paying for so my thing is this um sorry that that kind of went off track a little bit but i mean kind of yes or no you know right now i'm just all over the place i was tired and my brain woke up so i'm just trying to you know get my thoughts whatever that's me that's how i am um so my thing is that I, I say with Nike is you want to pay, you know, so much money to a kid, a 19 year old kid who hasn't proven himself, only played one year of college. And and now you just ready to hand out 100 million or whatever it is amount. You know, meanwhile, you have us who have 
you know, so, you know, us athletes on the, on the retail level, we are the ones that have to sell your the shoes. Um, you know, they parents come in with their kids, and we when we scan when they ask for the price, and we tell them, oh, this shoe is one hundred and forty dollars. This shoe is whatever the kids shoes. Kids shoes, you know, even as kids are growing, you know, and we're the ones that have to sell the shoes. So this is why my story goes back. You know, the 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 gentleman that we convinced to get the Pegasus, the, the little bit more expensive shoe, you know, he was like, you sold me. You know, I had to tell him, think about this. Shoes are like tires for your car. You don't, you're not going to buy cheap tires for your car. You're going to buy the best because you want them to last. And that's, you know, you want, you should have your feet in something comfortable. Even if you got to spend a little bit more. That's, that's my thing. What I tell people all the time, you know, take care of your feet. You're on your feet, you know, a lot, a large portion portion of the day so you might as well get something comfortable and even if that means spending a little more i know sometimes not everybody's gonna have it i was fortunate enough you know where my mom was able to get me you know whatever shoe i wanted really i could i could ask for any shoe so i get it sometimes sometimes you do have to just you know um get get what you can get but i mean again i repeat look for the deals wait sometimes Stuff goes on sale, and you don't always have to buy something um, expensive. You can buy an older model of something, and it's gonna be, you know, the same. Okay, now let's jump back forward. Um, so my thing is this, you know, Nike. I don't, I don't feel that we are appreciated enough um, because, you know, we get looked at as if pe we don't get business, people don't come in. It's our fault. We're looked at as, you know, what are we doing wrong? What can we do? You know, we got to have conversion. We got to hit rates. Conversion is just consumers that come in. How many of them are leaving buying something? Um, and, I mean, I don't know, but I don't have, I don't feel I have control over those, you know, things. Like, if you come into my store, how can, I can do my best to sell you on a shoe. But if you're really just coming in to look, or you really don't want to spend money, or let's say you went and you spent money somewhere else and now you're just coming in to see what kind of deal you get. You know, I don't feel like that should affect my pay in the future. I don't feel like if you don't come in and spend over a hundred dollars, you know, if you don't walk out with, with an item in your hand, because I, I, I do a lot of window shopping, you know, I'm not, I, I, I don't always walk into every Nike store and buy something. I don't walk into every store and buy something, you know, that it's rare if I do that. I always go in just to, to look and if I decide to get something, then I get something. But so that's my point. Like, why is the company? I know. I mean, obviously, the, the, the simple answer is, you know, he's going to make you money. But also, we are making the company money, I feel, by selling. Because you make, you make a, let's say, the first Zion Williamson shoe that comes out. Let's say you price it 150, let's say, which could up and down, whatever. Um, so it's a, it's a $150 shoe. Now, those parents or whoever has to come in, you know, we have to be the ones to say, why is this shoe worth $150? You know, sometimes parents, you know, kids ask us for shoes. They want LeBron's, they want Paul George's, Paul George's shoe. You know, the parents don't know who who they are sometimes so kind of we have to say okay this is a good basketball shoe this is it does this you know explain everything and even even then explaining all that stuff to them you know they're not convinced they don't want to spend a hundred dollars or, or more than a hundred dollars and so my point is just that i wish nike as a company would kind of i i, I don't i don't want to say respect because like i said we get treated pretty good we have good benefits it's it's more within within the store more than like a corporate thing if that makes sense you know um but then again i don't know if that's just because of what they're instructed to be or or what it's supposed to be from corporate i don't know i, I don't work up there i don't not that high up so i don't know but i just feel like i wish we could get a little bit more respect why can't we be guaranteed you know a certain paycheck or a certain amount of hours, not um, 
instead of like, well, we don't have hours to give out because we didn't make money this time, but yet you're willing to give out a hundred million to somebody that, you know, knock on wood, in case it does come to Chicago, but could tear his ACL, could do something. You know, we've seen that happen with athletes where they don't, they, you know, they don't even turn out to be the, the superstar that everybody thinks they are going to be, or they do get hurt and they don't even, you know, live up to the expectations that, you know, they, they think they're going to. Um, so yeah, I guess rant over. It's, it's not, a, a, I didn't, I don't want this to come across as me being ungrateful or negative and if by some small, you know, chance someone from Nike sees this, it's not me being ungrateful or me knocking the company. It's more of maybe interpret those things from the lowest person uh, at the at the retail level to the highest. You know, I think like we deserve to know. So then inform me so I'm not confused as to why, you know, my topic is why are we giving you know, a hundred million to a kid who's never played, you know, all that money, but yet our pay, our paychecks or, or how many hours we get is determined by other factors, you know, maybe we should, maybe the contracts, you know, should be like, well, you have to average this amount for a season, or maybe you have to do this amount of assists or you, every game, maybe they should be paid by game. Well, you only scored 10 points yesterday. So now we got to deduct that, you know. Wouldn't that be something? Maybe that should be something. Nike, if you're if you're if you're seeing this or if Adidas any Under Armour, let's 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 base contracts off of that. Right? What you do every game. And therefore, I wouldn't feel as bad then because I'm like he's earning that money, you know. He's earning what he's he's getting paid. And and maybe I invest in Nike stock, so maybe I should shut up. Maybe I should, but then again, I'm also a worker and, you know, I see things differently as well. I want things to be fair and even, and these are issues that I've discussed with multiple people at work. And I just want to see, I have better understanding of things and and understand why more than debate or argue. Um, and I'm, like I said, not trying to knock my company that I love and, and I enjoy working at, um, sometimes, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to end this video because I really wasn't expecting it to be this long. Um, but if you listen to it all the way, um, thank you and like comment and subscribe as always, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.